So for those of you who were not able to catch the stream, and if you are watching this as a video on my channel, I'm Unstable Voltage, and this is Phoenix Point, at least the prototype of Phoenix Point, which is a XCOM-style game created by the original creator of XCOM, Julian Gollop, and his company Snapshot Games. Um, the game is currently on Fig, there's a couple of days left, and uh, this is uh, about 18 months away-ish from completion. We've got a couple of scenarios here that we can go through. Uh, we've just basically got uh, a normal uh, a normal sort of mission, which is just our soldiers versus some enemy. Uh, and we've got the Kill the Queen, which is showing off one of the boss battles, which I think is the one that most people are going to want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You are welcome to ask questions. I will try and answer them as best as I can. Unfortunately, Julian can't be with us on this particular stream because it is currently 1.30 in the morning in Bulgaria where he lives. So hopefully we'll have to get that sorted on another occasion. But I will try and answer questions as best I can if anyone does have them. So this is the map we're on. There's only one map in this uh, sort of uh, prototype demo build. We are on an oil rig. As you can see, it's all very sort of uh, decrepit and brown and rusty. Uh, it may look a little bit darker and a little bit browner than it actually is when it comes out on YouTube because it does tend to desaturate the colours quite a lot. Uh, but it's quite detailed. This is as far as you can zoom out. So as you can see, it's actually quite a, quite a nice looking environment already. And again, the game is in development, so quite a lot of the stuff that you see um, is temporary artwork and placeholders and it doesn't have all the final effects on and stuff like that. So it, it might change quite a lot before the actual game comes out. And uh, it is in the Unity engine also, because it, that is something people are interested in. You can see there are some like alien things, alien growths coming up around the oil rig. Uh, but this is, uh, it's like I said, minimum zoom. Maximum zoom is actually quite high. You can actually get quite in close to the ground. You can see we've got a few dead bodies around here on the map. We've also got some like uh, hatched eggs and things like that. So... For the purposes of this demonstration, we have the ability to spawn three types of troops. We've got grunts, snipers, and heavies. Um, grunts, as you might expect, these are your normal sort of run-of-the-mill um, sort of action guys. Let's get three grunts. Uh, we're going to get a heavy. Heavies move very slowly, but they have a machine gun and a rocket launcher. Well, I say machine gun, it's literally it's a, a Gatling gun, a chain gun. And a, a sniper is exactly what you'd expect a sniper to be. So I can only place them on those little green squares to start the match. Let's go away and end our deployment phase. Again, you'll notice quite a lot of the stuff here is uh, placeholder, particularly when it comes to animation. And I'm just getting my paperwork because I do have a sort of a, a guide for the prototype, just sort of reminding me what things are. So you'll notice some parts of this are very, very similar to games like XCOM. You can see that there is a blue outline and there is an orange outline. Now that blue outline indicates a, a normal move and the orange outline indicates a dash move. If I move within the blue outline, I will still be able to fire my weapon. If I dash and move within the orange outline, that will consume all of my movement and I won't be able to um, fire a weapon or anything like that. However, there are a couple of um, exceptions to this rule. So let me just go ahead and select this guy over here. Now, if you consider something like the modern XCOM, I could move to the perimeter here or I could make a dash within the orange zone. But what you can actually do in Phoenix Point is if I, let's just say I want to move one square, so I'm going to move to there, I still have my blue move, and the blue move doesn't change. So I can literally carry on moving a square at a time if I want, within the blue area. So using a single move doesn't um, use an action. As long as I stay within that blue area, I can just move a square at a time. Um, but I'm going to go and move up over here. This is half cover, as you can see by the fact that there's a shield that is only half coloured in. So we're going to go and move into half, co half cover. Now you'll notice a couple of other elements on the UI. First of all, you can see um, down here, these are my two different weapon types. So the currently selected weapon is my assault rifle. I can switch to grenades. Now you'll find that some weapons do affect your ability to move, and that will be um, highlighted on the battlefield as you switch between those weapons. 
Now you see above my weapons, you can see these different icons, and they represent the aliens that I can see. So we've got this one here. This is the queen. This is the boss alien in this particular gameplay damage. She's got a lot of armor, five armor, and a, a lot of health, uh, which I'm not even going to attempt to count because there's so much of it. We have a uh, sort of weird crab man alien thing uh, over here. And we have another one back there. And I can actually also see another one hiding at the back there. So you'll also notice that these icons are different colours. Yellow means we have the creature flanked, therefore it's not in cover. Uh, red means that we can shoot at it, but it is in cover. And grey means that we can see it, but we can't actually shoot at it. It's either too far away or we don't have a line of sight or something like that. These things are also represented by these little arched lines that you can see that travel from any square that I mouse over to the various different enemies on the map. So I can see at a glance, if I was to stand there, I'd be able to shoot at the two aliens at the bottom, but they would be in cover because the lines are red. I'd also be able to shoot at the queen and the alien at the top, and the lines are yellow, which means they would be flanked. So very, very good indication of where I would be able to shoot. That's something that I really, really like. So another concept that we have in Phoenix Point is willpower. You can see this grunt has a certain amount of willpower. It's down here on his portrait. He has six willpower. And willpower is actually used to activate other abilities on the action bar, such as um, overwatching and also things like gun and run. So it works a little bit differently to run and gun that you'll have seen in the Firaxis XCOM, where you can basically do a dash move and then shoot. Uh, Gun and Run works the opposite way around. It basically allows you to do your move, uh, take your shot, which ends your uh, turn for that soldier, but then you can go ahead and hit Gun and Run, which will allow you to move him. Great if you want to get him here into a safe spot. So you gain will points, so gain willpower by scoring hits and killing aliens. And you can lose will points by uh, getting hit yourself. Uh, but you can also regain them. If you haven't moved this turn, you can use this ability here. And that will allow you to regain will points. And um, this is a nice little departure from the way that it works in Firaxis XCOM. Because instead of these abilities being cooldown based, they're actually dependent on the willpower resource. And I think that's actually going to be a really good way to get around having to have timers. Because the reason that Firaxis put that into XCOM was because they didn't want players to just sit constantly on Overwatch and wait for the aliens to run into them. You can't really do that on Phoenix Point, certainly not in the current build, because you can't, um, you, well, you don't have infinite willpower to keep spending on Overwatching. Now, the Grunts actually have an ability called Return Fire. It's um, shown by this icon over here on the right-hand side of the screen, just above our assault rifle. And that basically means if we get shot at, uh, we will return fire. Now, if you are actually making a move and you uncover an alien while you're making a move, uh, it will actually stop your move and you will be able to issue a new order. I don't think we're going to spot any new aliens that we haven't already seen, though, so I'm not too worried about that. We just need to try and get some guys into cover. So let's go ahead and put this grunt over on this side. We will move the heavy guy forwards a little bit. I don't want to go too far because the um, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of aliens over here. The lore of the game. I'm glad that somebody has asked that because this game's actually got um, quite a rich lore. It's a bit of a Lovecraftian theme to it. Um, but basically there is uh, something that has found its way to Earth called the Pandora virus. And it starts off in the sea or in the ocean. And basically what this virus is doing is it's slowly mutating things. And these creatures... Um, they take on the DNA of other creatures, which is why you see lots of aliens that look sort of partly humanoid and they'll look part human and part fish and part sea creature. If you look at this creature here, the, the actual uh, the queen, if I can get the camera on her face, actually has a very humanoid looking face. If you actually check out the Phoenix Point website, uh, there is a whole list of um, short stories that are being put on there by the uh, game's writers. And you can really get an idea of the lore for the game. But it is still a work in progress, so it's not completely done yet. So let's go ahead and see if we can start taking some shots. Now, it would be nice for us to start doing some damage to the Queen, but we do have quite a lot of these, uh, these crab men around that are a little bit annoying. So let's go ahead and see if we can't shoot at these guys here. Now... As I said, this is a work in progress, and a lot of the me mechanics uh, have not yet been implemented. So first of all, in this build, 
Every single time I fire a shot, it will hit. There is no random roll to determine whether or not the shot is going to hit or miss. That is going to change in the finished game. This is literally just a temporary mechanic for testing purposes. So when the game is finished, it will have uh, an actual realistic bullet simulation like the original XCOM in the 1990s did. So if you look at the Firaxis XCOM, the way it works is you have a percentage chance to hit an enemy. Uh, the computer basically rolls a dice, decides whether you hit or miss, and then the animation uh, reflects that, whether it hit or miss. In the original XCOM, in the 1990s, the actual trajectory of the bullet was traced from the um, its origin point to the target. And this meant that a bullet could clip cover. It also meant a bullet could hit, miss the target, travel beyond it, and hit something behind it, like another alien or one of your own soldiers and things like that. Because you can't do that in the current um, Firaxis XCOM. If you miss, you either hit your target or miss your target. There isn't any way to accidentally shoot one of your own soldiers in the back of the head or something like that. But that's the sort of modeling that they will be going for in Phoenix Point when it's done. So we're going to go ahead and take a shot at, uh, at this guy over here. Now he does have a chance to return fire. Now another thing in this demo version is the damage is deterministic. So there's no random roll to decide how much damage is done. Damage is basically decided by the base damage of the weapon, and there are some... I don't know what all the calculations are. I'm sure I've got them in all this paperwork that basically explains how it is calculated. Um, but it's basically the uh, base damage of the weapon reduced by the range uh, that the enemy is away from me. And also, depending on whether they're in half cover or full cover, that gives them some extra damage reduction as well. But let's go ahead and start taking some shots. So... We could hit either of these guys, we'll do three damage to that one, we'll do four damage to this one because he's a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and take our shot at him. So he actually loses one willpower as well. Now you can actually see we've disabled his left arm. So you have this little sort of rag doll that you can see uh, next to your soldier's health bar and that indicates different parts of the body. Now something being yellow means it is just uh, hit, it's damaged. Something being red means that it is disabled. So this guy over here, he's now lost the use of his left arm. So he's unable to use a shield, he's unable to throw a grenade with that arm or anything like that. So that is, uh, that's good. Now we've got our sniper over here. Now again, we could take a shot at that guy right at the back. Or we could have another shot at this guy. Can't quite finish him off, but it's probably worth taking the shot. We want to try and get rid of some of these aliens if we can. They've already um, returned fire at one guy, but they still get to return fire again. This guy has a line of sight on us, so both of these guys can return fire. Luckily, the sniper's so far away, they couldn't do much. So we might want to start picking on the queen. We've got to be careful with this guy. This, this guy here is actually a melee unit. He doesn't have a gun, but he does have a shield that will absorb a lot of the damage that comes his way. Uh, the game's called Phoenix Point because Phoenix Point is the name of the organization. Uh, was basically a, um, a group of scientists that were... Uh, basically trying to prevent what has happened. They are essentially a, uh, a, a group of watchmen who were attempting to prevent a catastrophe like this from happening. And um, they uh, they didn't work in... They partly worked in secret, but they also received government funding. Uh, but Phoenix Point is what the, uh, the organization uh, is called. So we've got a few more shots that we can take with our grunts. We could also lob a grenade... Now, again, we can take a shot at the Queen. Now, you'll notice, because if we target the Queen, because the Queen is a boss, we actually have various different points on the Queen that we can target. So we could shoot at the Carapace, where we wouldn't do an awful lot of damage, we'd only do one. Or we could try and target individual legs. Now, shooting individual legs wouldn't necessarily do a lot of damage either, but we could potentially um, slow it down and uh, make it uh, more difficult for it to manoeuvre. Or we could go ahead and try and finish that alien off there. Again, we know we won't do it, We'll get it down to one hit point. Let's go ahead and take the shot. I'm going to try and kill off as many of these guys as we can. Again, they are going to get to return fire. Now, one mechanic this game does have at the moment is a bleed mechanic, where if you take a certain amount of damage, you can start bleeding. Now, that is quite unfortunate because you start to take damage every turn. Now, we do still have you that we can take a shot with. Now, unfortunately, this guy doesn't have the ability to reach anybody. He's too far out of range. 
So we could try and move him somewhere else, but I'm a little bit concerned that if I move him anywhere, he'll be out of cover. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy to overwatch. And hopefully if anybody moves towards us, he will take a shot at them. So this should now be the alien's turn. Oh no, this guy still has his uh, move as well. Um, so you can go ahead and take a shot. And we can actually finish that, that one off that's over there. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you'll notice the guy at the back, that uh, other crab man, he's lost some willpower. And we've gained some willpower. So you score a kill, you gain some willpower. You're, um, if your team uh, loses a soldier, then you lose some willpower. So let's go ahead now and um, make sure everybody has taken their move. The reason that the game hasn't automatically uh, gone on to the alien's move is because I still have the ability to use my um, gun and run ability. So if I wanted to, I could pop this and move my soldier back, which I don't think I'm going to do. So everybody has taken all of their moves. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Now the aliens will get their turn. And you'll probably find all of a sudden that a lot more of them are going to come crawling out of the woodwork. There'll be a lot more of them around than you think. One of them has de deployed his shield. That one's taken a shot at me. Now again, our uh, grunts do have the return fire ability. So we get some free shots. Now here comes the queen. She is going to be a problem. We do get a free shot there. and I think that just bounced off armor. We didn't really do any damage there at all. And she's going to get quite close. And she's going to hurt us. She is uh, not going to be gentle at all. And we've got some more units coming in as well. Now he's just deployed his shield with the look of things. Now we've actually taken a bleed on this guy down here. Now we can rotate the camera. There's no um, transparency at the moment, so we can't see through units, unfortunately. Now the problem we've got here is this guy's actually had his arm disabled. Now that means he can't use his gun, so he's got some problems. Um, but if we go ahead and select his grenade, we can see where we can move to. Uh, we might want to just try and lob a grenade on the Queen. There isn't really anywhere safe he can get to, uh, to be honest. Let's just try and move him back over here a little bit. And then we're going to take our grenade, and we're going to throw the grenade. We're going to throw it over here and try and hit the Queen, because explosives do shred armor. You can see we've shredded one armor there as well. Now, what I might do in an effort to try and really... Um, do some damage to the queen because this guy's only got one health left and he's got a bleed he's going to die on the next turn anyway let's go ahead and take our heavy and our heavy has a secondary uh, weapon here he has the rocket launcher so we're going to go ahead and use this thing now this does a massive amount of damage so i'm going to try and hit the queen and hit this thing over here at the same time um, there's no destructive terrain yet in this demo build the full game will have uh, fully destructive terrain so you will be able to like blow the entire map up almost. That's kind of what we're going for. So we've done some damage to the Queen. We've got rid of some of its armor already. We've killed that guy off there. Before we do anything else, where's our sniper? And who does our sniper have some shots on? So our sniper could possibly hit this guy. So we could take a shot at him. We wouldn't quite kill him off. But what we could do is we could spend a willpower point and we can actually target, if we wanted, we can actually target his gun arm. And we, if we shoot his gun arm off, he won't be able to shoot at us. So let's go ahead and spend that point and we'll actually disable his gun arm. Now because all of these aliens are sort of mutations, they can adapt and change throughout the game. So the aliens are actually going to evolve and adapt uh, as the game goes on. So you'll see that they'll have like different arms and different weapons and uh, basically it means that hopefully if you play through the game multiple times and employ different tactics you'll actually see the aliens doing different things and that's something I really really like the sound of. So I've got another grunt over here at the back. I could throw another grenade and try and um, shred some more armor but I think what we'll actually do is take a shot and I think what we'll try and do is, I think we'll try and aim straight for the head here. So let's go ahead and take that shot at the head. And it uh, looks like the head may well have exploded there. Yes it is, we have, uh, we have blown the head off this thing. Now that is not going to kill it off. Uh, you'd think it would, but no, that's not how this works. It's not that easy. Now I might want to move this guy a little bit further back. So... Let's use a couple of willpower points and we can use our gun and run. 
and then I have the ability to go and move him a little bit further away. So let's go ahead and move him around here, just to try and keep a little bit of distance between ourselves and the Queen. So that's all good. Uh, who have we got left? You still have the ability to take a shot. Now you're a little bit close to the Queen. Let's move you over here. Let's try and get you to a bit of safety if we can. And we can take a shot with you, or we could throw a grenade again. A grenade wouldn't be a bad deal. We're too far away to shoot that guy. Let's go ahead and throw a grenade then. I think we're in range. We might be just out of range there, actually. Yeah, we're a little bit too far away to use the grenade. Okay, that's disappointing, so we'll go ahead and take a shot. So let's go ahead and decide where we want to aim. So we can shoot at the abdomen. So the queen has the ability to produce these little larvae things that are quite annoying. I meant to shoot at the abdomen there. It's a little bit difficult when you've got the targets over the top of each other. But again, that's something that will be uh, worked on in the final game. So you've used all of your actions. I don't want to gun a run with you. Um, you can't do anything else either. So that should now be the alien's turn. Hey there, Tom. How are you doing? I thought you were heading off to bed, but it's good to have you on board. See, this guy now is deploying his shield. I could try and disable his shield arm. This guy's probably going to do the same. So the fact that you can target individual body parts and try and disable them uh, really, really helps you out. This guy's arm's sort of flailing around all over the place. I'm hoping the queen just attacks the guy that's already dying anyway. And I think she is doing. Well, that's good. He was going to die on the next turn anyway. So the queen kind of wasted a turn there. Again, this is a demo build. The AI at the moment is... Relatively simplistic, but it, um, you know, it, it again, it will get better as the game goes on. So let's just go and see if we can finish this queen off. We'll just go ahead and switch to our sort of minigun. And uh, let's see if we can just fire straight at the abdomen here and do as much damage as we can. That's the carapace. Uh, this one here is the abdomen. Let's go ahead and shoot at that. So we've blown a massive hole in the back of it. Now, I was playing a game of this earlier. I only actually got my hands on this build earlier today. Uh, but I did manage to kill the Queen. Unfortunately, I got wrecked by a lot of the aliens that were coming my way. So, these guys are quite far away. And most of them are melee. So, I don't think I'm going to have to worry too much about those. So, let's just ca uh, concentrate on f putting as much damage into the Queen as possible. Uh, trying to see if I can do more damage if I target the legs. And do one more damage if I target this leg. Because it's slightly closer. And as I said at the moment, damage is sort of based on distance. Can't really do anything else with you. We'll leave you back there. That's fine. Now, I could go in there with another grenade. It wouldn't be a terrible idea. Um, I mean, the Queen's probably going to be able to get you anyway. Let's just move you forward slightly. And then let's go ahead and see if we can lob a grenade and how close we could get that. Yeah, it, it wouldn't do an awful lot of damage, but it would shred the armor, which means subsequent shots will do the damage. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm trying to sort of w watch the chat at the same time as well. So so we can get our sniper to take a shot. What about if we go for this leg? Yeah, we're going to have to try and just take this thing out. We've got to be careful of the other uh, other aliens coming towards us. But we want to do as much damage as we can. Now she's definitely going to get another hit on one of us. Now do you have a gun? No, looks like the rest of the guys are melee. So they're, they're, they're going to have to close the gap. Hi, Grovius. Hi, how are you doing? It's not the case of I was lying. It's just the case of I kept get, I kept receiving bad information. But it's just one of those things. Apparently that's games development for you. But it was all because uh, IGN were getting their little exclusive. Oh, she's still spitting out these little annoying um, lava things. Now, they, they can bite you. If they bite you, it can do some damage. Right, so I'll turn again. Uh, she still has some armor, so I'm very, very tempted to go ahead and use another grenade here, because we can kill off that uh, larvae as well, and that gets rid of even more of her um, armor. So let's go ahead and use the heavy here. Um, oh, the larvae isn't dead, apparently. Well, we'll target the legs right here, and then we'll only be one damage away from killing this thing off. Didn't quite get it on that shot, but... Again, anybody that's sort of just tuned in and is wondering why the shots are all hitting 
and why the damage is sort of deterministic and not random. It's just because it's, it's an early prototype build and this is for testing purposes, essentially. So we don't really have to worry about anything shooting at us. I don't think any of these aliens that are still on the map have a weapon. Uh, they're all melee, so the best thing that I can actually try and do right now is back up. Uh, backing up means I'm going to be further away from the melee guys over there. And it'll give me a better opportunity to try and shoot things. Now, you do have a grenade, but you are too far away. Um, before we do that, actually, there's an ability the sniper has, if we can pull this off, uh, with his pistol. And that is um, this one here. So if we go ahead and shoot one of these guys with the pistol... Uh, oh, no, we, can't sh we actually can't reach the... Um, that thing in there. Okay, let's move you over here. This might be a bit of a risk. I'm, I'm experimenting with tactics here. We want to take the pistol and we're going to shoot with the pistol at the lava. So we'll shoot that. Nice and easy to kill. Now we should... Right, the queen's actually panicked now and lost a willpower. Now I can use this ability. I should be able to. Extra shot. Fire the weapon again at the same or a different target. So I should now be able to take another shot and fire at the queen and that should be the queen now dead killed with a pistol brilliant we've still got some mo uh, some abilities or some movements left that we can take there's still a couple of guys around um i might just go on to overwatch because they will sort of run towards us there's a guy right at the back there. he actually still has a gun so he may decide no he didn't decide to do anything i've got my sniper out in the open which is a, a little bit of a concern uh, we want to get rid of this guy first uh, let's consider then getting you guys uh, back into cover so we'll move you up here and we can go ahead and shoot at it directly we've got that one on that side We've got this one on this side again. He's got that shield up, so we're not going to be able to do a lot of uh, be able to do a lot of damage to him. Uh, we do still have a spare grenade, but I think he's far too far away. Uh, we'll Actually, he's in range. Um, so we'll go ahead and shoot him. Shred his armor, and then if we shoot with this guy, uh, we should be able to uh, do a lot more damage to him. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and shoot there. And we don't have any other shots on this side of the map. Let's go ahead and get our sniper and move him into a better position. And we want to switch back to our sniper rifle. And we've still got some willpower left, so let's go ahead and use our ability to target. And we're going to go ahead and shoot this guy's shield arm. And we were trying to disable it. We were trying to knock that shield off. Now, we have done some damage to it, so his shield's not going to be quite as effective. But I think we're just going to go have, uh, have to go ahead here and... You can't actually um, see him, can you, for some reason? You can if you move there, but he would still be in full cover. I can't go anywhere and keep you in cover. Let's let's move you over here anyway. I don't think you're going to get shot. And now this gives you an opportunity to just outright fire at this guy. And unfortunately, that won't kill him. Has disabled his shield. That's fantastic. Don't really need to move you back. So we'll finish your actions up. You died from bleed damage. Excellent. And now we've got one guy left. Oh no, there's two. Because there's that one at the back there with the gun. So we can probably... I'm not going to waste another grenade on him. I think we can just finish this guy off if we fire at him. And indeed we can. So that's him killed off. And we gain a little bit of extra willpower. Once again, of course, the animations are all placeholder. Uh, let's go ahead and move this guy further forwards. And we'll put him on Overwatch. Because we know we've got that other alien up there. Yeah, Game Night, I completely agree with you. When you consider the fact that this game is still 18 months away or more from completion. I mean, I admit, it has had a year's worth of work put in on it already. But there's already quite a lot of detail on there, and it is a nice-looking game. Of course, this is only one environment type. There'll be many different types of environments to play on. 
Uh, but and, and I can't wait until the destruction is put in and just imagine how much fun you're going to have when you can blow up all of these oil barrels and flammable tanks and just bits of scenery. If you've got an alien hiding behind cover and it's blocking your line of sight, just shoot it. Just blow the, blow the cover up. That's all you need to do. Yeah, the, well, that's the idea of the heavy. I mean, he, he will literally just rate wade in and wreck stuff. This is actually the first time I've attempted this mission with three grunts. I normally use two grunts, two heavies, because it's nice to have that missile launcher. But the advantage of the grunts is that they've got better movement than the heavy. Uh, they also have two grenades each, whereas the, the grunt only has a single missile. And the grunts have return fire, but the heavies don't. Uh, so we know we've got that th that one over here with the gun on his arm, and I do want to set up ready to uh, shoot him. So hopefully he's going to move towards us. Uh, let's go ahead and move the heavy up here in full cover. Doesn't really give him a chance to overwatch, but it does put him in a slightly better position. And uh, we'll tell him that we've finished with his actions there. And as for the sniper, we could probably do with getting the sniper somewhere where he could take a better shot as well. Uh, can't quite get him around to that side. Let's go ahead and move the sniper over here. He's only going to be in half cover. But I think we've only got one enemy left to deal with on this map. So it's the alien's turn. Hopefully I'm not going to have to go hunting it. It looks like we might have to. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a line of sight. So if I move over here. We still can't actually see the alien at the moment. This is a, a little bit of a game of cat and mouse. Um, let's move over to this corner. This is risky because it is a dash move. We still can't see the alien at the moment. Yep, we'll finish your actions. And as you can see, the heavy doesn't really have many places he can move. He's very, very slow. We'll try and creep up a little bit with the sniper. Still can't see where, where he is yet. We'll put you on overwatch. No, I think, I think he's realised that the tide's turned against him. If you'll excuse the pun. And he's deciding he's going to stay well back. But between... I mean, this is this is only the second attempt I have had at this uh, build of the game. And I had a couple of attempts at the earlier build. And the earlier build didn't have the Queen boss in, by the way. And I never actually managed to beat it. And um, I, this is the closest I've ever come to winning. Admittedly, I have lost one soldier. But I'd really love to be able to uh, to complete it and say that I managed it. Right, there we go. We can actually see him now. So we've got some overwatches set up, so our heavy's going to take a shot. So we've done some damage to his torso. And now our sniper's going to take a shot. There's another two damage. We've actually done some damage to the uh, shoulder there, which that's normally the auxiliary weapon. At least it is for the, uh, for the heavies. Could be the equipment, so it could be his grenades. Now, the, the earlier version I played, they didn't actually use grenades... Um, but apparently they do in this build. I've also just noticed this thing here. I had not noticed that before in the background. That is that is quite creepy. That is very, um... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll stop looking at that because uh, I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Uh, so we can finish this guy off, uh, probably. If we actually tell our sniper... Um, oh, our sniper can't actually fire. Our sniper's got had his arm injured look. So, he's got one arm injured, which means he can't fire his sniper rifle, but we should be able to fire his pistol. Um, no, see, I think this is something uh, that should ha uh, should be changed. I think it should be... Because um, he, he should be able to use his pistol in his left hand, right? You'd, you'd assume that he could do that. Let's go and move him over here and see if, see if he can. You notice because he's got his pistol equipped now, he can move a lot further. Yeah, we can now actually take the shot, uh, and we can use the pistol. And there we go. That only did one damage, which is pretty pathetic. Now, he will return fire. Now, that hurt. We've only got one health left there. Uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can finish him off. Uh, how much damage could we do? Well, let's just get as close with the heavy as we can. In fact, let's make sure we will have a line of sight on him. There we won't. So we're going to move a little bit closer. Oh, it's his left that got disabled. Well, either way, I mean, the, the, the thing is... Um, it's a two-handed weapon, uh, so you need both arms. But yeah, I don't, it's difficult to know whether that means his right arm or whether you're looking at him from behind. Because I'm looking at the soldier from behind, so this is his right arm. So does that mean it's his right arm, or does that mean I'm looking at him from uh, from the front, in which case that's his left arm? It's difficult to tell. 
So yeah, line of sight indicators. We want to go over there. We are going to take the shot. This won't quite finish him off, unfortunately, but... Uh, we've disabled his grenade arm. Now, hopefully... Can you get anywhere? I'm surprised you don't have a line of sight in there at all, anywhere. And definitely, well, we don't even have a spare grenade. Um, so I guess we can put you on Overwatch. We might lose our sniper here, but I'll settle for that if I can beat the mission. So let's dash over here with this guy. Uh, I don't know whether or not this is actually going to be the final music for the game. The music for the game is being composed by John Broomhall, who is the composer that did the music in the original 1990s XCOM. So hopefully it'll have a very XCOM feel to it. Oh yeah, we can just use this ability, can't we? Forgot about that. We can take an extra shot at him. He'll probably return fire. We're only going to do one damage though. So, well we're going to lose the sniper anyway, so let's just take the shot. He's going to return fire. And there's our sniper dead. And he dies from bleed damage anyway. So what I should have done is just not bothered to uh, take that shot. But um, that's the first time I've actually won uh, on this. Uh, I must admit one thing on this current build that makes it a little bit difficult are the bleeds. Because there aren't currently any ways to stem the bleeding. So um, obviously as the game goes on, as this prototype gets worked on, there'll be more and more stuff added to it. And one of those things will be some form of ability to bandage the bleeds and stop the bleeding. Um, I know from the previous build, the amount of hit points that the soldiers have has been reduced. Uh, so that does mean that um, uh, they do die a little bit quicker from uh, bleed damage. Oh yeah, the music, the music is nice. I mean, I, I do like the music they've used in it. I just don't know whether or not it's going to be the actual uh, music that remains in the game at the end. Uh, let's go and have a quick look at uh, Phoenix versus the Alien Horde. It's pretty much the same thing, except we're not going to have the Queen here. And there's going to be a, a, a slightly uh, larger amount of aliens. Um, looking at this now, actually, this is a slightly different map. It's changed a little bit, actually. It used to have a, an alien here the queen here yeah this is a slightly different map this is the map from the original build that i played um previously and uh, you can set there's a lot of rooms and things around here lots and lots of places for the aliens to hide uh, looks like there's been a few more deploy points added in um so i might utilize those where i can let's go for that same build let's go for three grunts let's get one over here um i want to try and keep many of my guys together if i can Let's get another grunt here. Let's get one at the back. And then let's get a heavy and let's get a sniper. And we'll go ahead and end the deployment there. So I'm surprised we haven't already started by spotting a load of aliens. Now let's go ahead and start moving. Now if we do happen to spot an alien while we are moving, it will give us the ability to give another order to our units. Or at least it'll basically stop the movement in its tracks, as it were. Uh, let's go ahead and try and move these guys into some sort of cover if we can. A little bit difficult to just see exactly what side they're going to get cover from. That's going to use all of the movement for our heavy, but we really need to sort of get him out from around that corner. And let's go ahead and get our sniper out here as well. Probably shouldn't keep all of my units grouped together. Especially knowing that the uh, aliens do use grenades in this build. Uh, but let's go... Well, actually, let's leave you around this corner here. And we'll let the aliens have a turn and see if they want to start coming towards us. So, we don't need to do anything else with you. Uh, we've possibly got one overwatch that we can use. Which is you. So, we'll put you on overwatch. Um, we can overwatch with you as well. So, we might as well do that. Now, at the moment, there is infinite ammo. Um, but obviously this being a Julian Gollop game, there's very much a talk of trying to make it so that uh, there's infantry management where you actually have equipment and uh, ammo that can run out and stuff like that. So we've already spotted one alien. We did manage to hit it in the head. That'll reduce its willpower. Unfortunately, we did take a shot to the back. Already been hit in the arm. Now we returned fire and we didn't do any damage, but that's because we don't have as good a range. Now you see these guys, these guys look different. These these weren't in the version that I played before. 
They look like they move a lot more quickly. Yeah, you're, you're a little bit sort of out there. You did manage to uh, take a shot and you've hit his arm as well, which is good. So, we're, we're starting to get a few problems here already, as you can see. Now, where's that alien that I hadn't seen before? Is it this one? Looks like he's got one of those um, larvae on his head that came from the queen. So, there's a couple of guys. These are sort of... Oh, you're right at the back there. You're really in a, a bit of a predicament. I'm not even sure how they managed to hit him uh, from all the way over there. Now, the missile launcher does have a pretty long range on it. It doesn't have an infinite range, but... You'd be surprised how far this thing can actually travel. So I think we're just going to use that and instantly um, do a lot of damage over there. We've killed one of them, shredded the armor on this one. Now you've got this guy. And you've got that guy over there, so you've got two potential problems. Um, again, we've got to be careful. There's not many places where we have a line of sight here. Which is weird, because the alien had a decent enough line of sight on me. Um, so let's go ahead and move you around there. Now, I know you don't have a line of sight. Now, you see it's just stopped moving, as we've obviously just triggered an overwatch. But uh, we can carry on that move. And we'll go ahead and we'll overwatch ourselves. And just try and move some people into better positions. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of good ones that we can use. Uh, you can come around this side. You might get a line of sight on something. So let's just have you over watching that. I've got a feeling this one probably won't go as well as the previous uh, previous mission did. But we can afford to overwatch you. So we'll try and let some of the aliens come towards us. Uh, we do have our sniper. Our sniper has the ability to target this guy. Um, he's the only one that we can see. And I think we'll go for the aimed shot. And I think we'll go for the head, as we've already done some damage to the head. So we can try and disable it. So let's go ahead and uh, shoot it in the head. Could have tried to shoot the shield off, of course, but I was just trying to pile damage on. So you can see it's already bleeding. Now, he actually used a grenade there. That is the first time that I've seen the uh, aliens use a grenade. Again, you will find there's a few little uh, camera issues where the camera doesn't always... Uh, show you the action that's going on but again that is just a uh, side effect of this being a prototype in the full game there'll be transparency so when you've got um units hiding behind obstructions you'll be able to see the outline of them now this guy's already taken a little bit of damage these guys are sort of backing each other up a little bit which i don't like these guys seem quite fast and you're firing a grenade as well i'd or some sort of thing. I'd appreciate it if you didn't do that. Oh wow, our heavy is already down to uh, one health. So I'm quite glad that he already fired his rocket. If he doesn't manage to survive the round, I might just have to... Nope, he didn't survive the round. So this is the, the issue that I was saying about bleeding. Now, somewhere on the paperwork here, Julian did include a list of the enemy types that are available in this. So we've got the Crabman Brawler. Attacks in close combat with his massive pincer and also uses a shield which can be deployed to provide hide cover in a specific direction. So they'll be the ones that were in um, on the previous build, uh, which are basically... Um, can't see one now, but it's, it's basically the guy with the, the, the pincer on one arm. Yeah, this guy's the one that we killed. He's got a pincer on one arm and he's got the shield on the other. So that's the Crabman Brawler. Then there's the Crabman Gunner who's equipped with machine gun and grenades. So that is basically um, this guy over here. So he's got the shield. It's the same as the Brawler, except one of his arms is a um, is uh, is a machine gun. Um, and he's got yeah he's got this grenade launcher on one arm instead of the uh, instead of the shield. Uh, then there's the Crabman Tank, a very tough, slow moving gunner with an armored carapace and a shield. So that's this one. He's got the shield and the gun. He's the tank. Then there's the Crabman Scout. Fast moving, low hit points, armed with a gun and a grenade launcher. So that could be that unit there. And then there's also the Spitter. Fast moving with a close combat pincer, grenade launcher, and a head that spits poison venom. Is it a head or a hand? It says head that spits poison venom. It has a pincer. Um, doesn't have a gun. Yeah, so that one there is the Cra Crabman Spitter. So I don't think I've seen a scout. Unless, oh, that's the scout because he's got a gun. 
So that's the scout there. So we do have all of the different alien types so far that are in this prototype build uh, present in this particular game. So let's go ahead and... Um, well, we've taken quite a lot of damage already. It'd be nice if we could get a grenade over there. Let's start with... Um, with you. Do you have any... No, I didn't want you to move over there. Okay, that was a miss... That was a misplay. I was trying to select this guy. And, um... For some reason, I, I, I messed it up. So, my bad. Uh, what I'd like to try and do is get a grenade over there. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to hit either of those guys. I don't have a line of sight on them. They are trying to get closer. So, if I tried to throw a grenade, could I get it over there? Yeah, I could do some damage to you with a grenade. Let's throw one out there. Shreds his armor, does some damage. So, you have a vision on a couple of different targets. Let's go ahead and have a look at taking one of them out. So, we could completely kill you. Or we could do some damage to you. I think we'll try and take this one out first. I think having a dead alien is definitely uh, a good alien. Now, you, unfortunately, are returning fire. Did some damage to us, but didn't kill us. Okay, that's fine. We've got our sniper. Now, you've only got the one target. You can almost kill it. That is so close. Uh, we will go ahead and take the shot, then. Again, it'll return fire. Because it has the ability to do that. Now, I don't quite think we can finish it off um, because we don't have we can't use that um, double shot with the sniper rifle only with the pistol uh, and that guy I used all of his moves for so that was a little bit unfortunate uh, I could go ahead and use the gun and run on this guy and then just sort of move him around into full cover but then it'll probably just target one of my other units anyway so we'll, we'll finish his actions there this should be the aliens turn I honestly don't know how many aliens are on the map here Luckily, he died from the bleed damage. There comes in another grenade. So that was unfortunate. We've got another gunner over in this direction. Again, of course, with it being a prototype, it's not currently balanced. So it is just to basically show off the different alien types and the uh, different mechanics within the game. So we know we've got these guys around here. This one's actually on one health. I don't think we can easily hit him. We could possibly move you over here. You wouldn't be able to get a shot on him from there, unfortunately. Which is weird, because if you... Do, well, you, yeah, you wouldn't be able to shoot him from there because um, you'd have used your uh, both your movements. You do have grenades left. I mean, we could go ahead and move you over here. We spotted an enemy. We already... Oh, we've actually got this guy right around the corner. Um, we might just want to go straight for him and try and kill him off in that case then. Because we can do. What my original plan was going to be there was to throw a grenade over the uh, cargo container and hit that one that had one health. Hi Tess, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Yeah, we all got sorted. Got access to the build earlier on this afternoon. And as IGN have now put their video live, we are able to, uh, to show this off somewhat. So you've, you've already missed the first part of this video where we took on the, uh, the Queen... But I will be uploading it to YouTube, so that's, uh, that is not a problem. Now, there's a couple of aliens left on this map. Wasn't there another one over on this side on the left? I don't know where it's gone. We definitely want to try and deal with that guy, though. He's got one health. Now, I don't think you can actually get anywhere where you could hit him either. So, let's move you back out to here. And uh, we do have line of sight on an alien. We can't do an awful lot of damage to him. He will return fire, but... But we're going to have to start doing some damage to him anyway. Retcon Raider, hi. How are you doing? Um, yeah, it does. It does look great. I mean, I'm even I'm surprised. You know, given the fact that it's so far away from completion, and I mean, obviously the game is going to be funded. It, it's all. It's already met its funding goal on Fig. But you know, uh, uh, Snapshot didn't know that this game was going to be funded until it hit that barrier they've already spent a year working on it they've already spent about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars of their own money to get it to the state that it is now um obviously what i'm able to show you here is only a couple of maps and some very limited mechanics but you've got to remember with the way that game development works is everything's built like a jigsaw puzzle except instead of people working on the entire puzzle people are working on individual pieces and you know, so like, for example, this game has a geoscape, much like the original XCOM did. And the geoscape isn't part of this build, because currently the geoscape doesn't talk to the tactical battles. They're two completely separate things. So, 
you know, there are lots of bits and pieces of the game that have already been worked on. There are lots of other concepts. There are lots of designs for other aliens, or the weapons, the factions, the vehicles. Uh, there are lots of different things being worked on all at once, but they're just, they're not, they haven't been thrown into the pot yet. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll have to wait a little bit until you can uh, see a lot of those. Hey, Kenny, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Uh, but yeah, it's just a case of, um, you know, they're going to be adding bits and pieces to it, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, Julian is going to allow me to keep access to uh, builds as they go on, and hopefully I'll be able to show little bits and pieces as the game goes on, and show you things that have been added. I'll be very careful not to add spoilers, because one thing that I do find with games that are in development is that you can... You can sort of learn too much during the development process and by the time the game actually gets released uh, you're either bored of it or it's been spoiled for you because you already know half of the stuff that's in it and half of the stuff that happens. I want to try and avoid doing that but what I do want to do is be able to sort of show you hey have a look at this this is how far the games come on even if it's just once a month where I do a quick 15 20 minute video that just says look at all the new stuff that Snapshot have done in that time. So that's one of the things that I would like to do. But like I said, I don't know whether or not that's going to happen. Uh, let's go ahead and um, go to run this guy again. We can move him around here. Now, we've got to be careful. Because if you do run out of willpower, uh, you can panic. So we've got no willpower left now. Uh, but we should be okay as long as nothing too bad happens. We can take a shot with our sniper, actually. And we can finish this guy off. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll actually gain us some more willpower. Now, we've still got this guy. Now, you don't have any movement left, unfortunately. You do have some willpower points, though. So, I can go ahead and gun and run with you. And we'll go ahead and move you around this side. And then, hopefully, this thing won't be able to get you. So, let's finalise your actions. And uh, you must have died from bleed damage. The game is over. I've won two games in a row. That doesn't, doesn't usually happen. But um, I'm not going to have this stream going on for too long because, like I said, there's literally only the two um, the two maps to show. But we will go in and do the kill the queen again because I know there's a few people that um, that have just sort of turned up and didn't get to see that. But like I said, I will be uploading this on to uh, the YouTube channel, so you will be able to see it. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, I think the build that I had before seemed to work uh, really well for me. So three grunts. Uh, a sniper and a heavy. Uh, once again, I must point out that these are just very, very basic builds that are preset classes for this demo. Uh, when the final game comes out, you will be able to um, equip your soldiers differently. You'll be able to customize the way they look as well. Uh, you'll be able to um, essentially tweak soldiers. So you won't have sort of, there won't be sort of very hard classes where they can only do certain things. You'll be able to sort of uh, specialize uh, and diversify the soldiers that you have, and you'll be able to get access to some fairly unique soldiers with unique abilities as well. So there's quite a lot of nice stuff coming, but obviously it's early days, and uh, we've just got these very, very basic archetypes uh, to be able to demonstrate what's going on. So let me just hit end deployment. And again, as you can see, a lot of canned animations. So for those that haven't seen it yet, this is the alien queen, this big, ugly-looking crab-like thing over here. Yeah, the Grunt is basically just a, a, a basic generic soldier with basic generic abilities. He has an assault rifle, he has a couple of grenades, and he has a passive ability, which is return fire. So if somebody takes a shot at him or takes a shot at one of his uh, Conrads, he will return fire. And uh, we've got that creepy little, uh, oh, wrong camera rotation angle there. Uh, we've got this creepy little head thing uh, over here again that we noticed before that is uh, giving me the willies, to be honest. So I'm going to back out of that. Um, so, yeah, one of the things that I do like about this um, is if you're going to move into a specific um, location, you can actually see the aliens that you can hit. So you see those yellow lines and the red line. Those yellow lines mean that I'll be flanking aliens that are connected to the other end of those lines. So if you actually trace those yellow lines, I'll, if I move to that tile, I'll be flanking that alien at the top, the one that's just here. And I will be flanking the queen. Uh, and then I've got two red lines that are heading down here and here, which is these two guys, which means I'll be able to hit them, but they're in cover. If I were to move, for example, over... 
trying to find a spot that does it. If I was to move here, you'll see that all of the four of them have gone grey. Now, the reason they've gone grey is because I'll have moved outside of the blue area, which means it'll be a dash move. If I make a dash move, I won't be able to fire my weapon, uh, which is the reason why they're all showing grey. Uh, but one of the things that I do love, and let's go ahead and select this soldier to do it, because I want to move him into cover. In uh, for Axis XCOM, um, moving within the blue area is a single move. Moving within the orange area is a double move. Uh, firing your weapon or using as an ability ends that soldier's uh, turn. But what you can do in this, and this is something that's only recently added. This was put in today because the game does have a hybrid system. There's a lot of a lot, half of the people wanted time units like the original XCOM and like uh, Xenonauts, and half of the people wanted a two action point system like the modern XCOM. So what you've essentially got here is you've got a two action point system like the modern XCOM. You've got your abilities, but these abilities aren't on a cooldown timer like in the modern XCOM. They use your willpower points, uh, which is a resource. But the brilliant thing is that if I just want to move this guy, let's say over here, if I move him to this tile, and you think, well, I don't want to do that, that's stupid, because I've, I've wasted one of his movements. But if I move him to there, that hasn't used his movement, because I'm still within the blue zone. I'm still within the one movement zone. I can edge him forwards one tile at a time if I want to. Now, you might think that's a little bit cheesy. Because you might think, well, what you're doing there is you're just moving one tile at a time in case you run into an alien. Well, yes, but it doesn't matter. Because if I was making a, a, a full move or a dash move and I ran into an alien, if I spotted an alien that I hadn't already seen, it pauses the movement and allows me to reissue the order. So that is one of the things that's really, really good. Unfortunately, most of the aliens on this map we can already see. Uh, but if, let's say, for example, I took my, um, my... I mean, this heavy can hardly move. He's so slow. Such a slow unit. Um, let's just go ahead and move him over here. Uh, but if I was to tell my heavy to sprint over to this um, space, for example, and there was an alien hidden around this corner that nobody had spotted, as soon as it came in line of sight, he would stop moving on the spot. And then I'd be able to reissue the order to tell him to move away and get to safety. So that'll be something that is really, really good. So uh, without waffling too much more, let's go ahead and try and get these um, guys into a bit of cover. And we will take some shots. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of cover on this uh, particular map. Uh, now let's have a look and see who can shoot us. So this guy has a gun. This guy has a gun. This is a melee guy up here. So we really want protection from the sort of bottom of the screen really uh, so let's go ahead and um, put you over on this side I'm hoping that'll help us out now we're not going to target the queen here we're going to try and take out some of the other guys first uh, potentially the ones that have got the guns so we can do um, hardly any damage to you and two damage to you so once again this is something that I did explain at the beginning of the stream but I'll, I'll explain it again um, for the people that have come late and have missed it in this demo build there are a lot of mechanics that are not working the way that they will in the finished game uh, in particular the fact that every single shot i fire hits as you'll uh, notice um, i don't ever get any sort of um, percentage indication of hit chance that's because every shot will hit um, that's not how it's going to be in the finished game in the finished game it's going to be like the original xcom uh, well, that's the plan at least. It'll be like the original XCOM where bullets actually have traced tra trajectories. Now, that's different to the modern XCOM. If you look at the Firaxis XCOM, basically the way that works is you aim at a target and you have a percentage chance to hit that target. The computer rolls a dice and you either hit or miss and then the animation triggers to show you whether you hit the target or not. If you miss the target, then the bullet just goes nowhere it doesn't do anything even if the bullet physically looks like it hits something else it does no damage in the original XCOM if you missed a shot the stray bullet could hit another alien that was stood behind it it could hit a piece of um, cover it could blow up um, cover it could blow up explosive barrels it was quite possible to miss a shot and hit one of your own guys in the back of the head it used to happen all of the time and that's because there was simulated bullet trajectory and that's the way it's going to work in phoenix point so that's something that i'm very very much looking forward to uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that there's no randomness on the damage uh, in this particular build damage is purely calculated based on the base base value 
or base damage value of the weapon and it's reduced by distance so the further away a target is the less damage i'm going to do to it and also depending whether they're in full cover or half cover so they get a damage reduction from the cover as well so you can't actually um take any shots more shots uh, we can get our heavy to take a shot uh, i'd like to try and finish this guy off if we can let's go ahead and start doing some damage to the guys with guns if we can kill the ones with guns, then we literally force the melee ones to come towards us. Unfortunately, that does include the queen. And uh, both of those guys are going to be taking um, sort of uh, return fire shots. So if we can kill one of them off, uh, we don't want to target the queen directly at the moment. We want to go for these guys. And you're the one that's almost dead. We can't quite finish you, but what we can do, if we spend a willpower point... Uh, we can go ahead and target your gun arm. So if we go ahead and shoot your gun arm and we can destroy it. There we go. We've disabled his gun. He's still got a grenade launcher. But he's going to have to get a little bit closer to use that. And he was unable to return fire on that turn as well. Uh, let's leave you there. I prefer if you were in a bit better cover to be honest. Uh, actually let's use gun and run. And let's go ahead and just move you back here. You'll probably get chomped on by the queen otherwise anyway. So let's do, go ahead and finish your actions. Now, you still have the ability to take a shot. Uh, you can probably finish that guy off, actually, if he's close enough for you to do any damage. Yeah, so that'll be one of them dead. Now, this one's going to return fire again, probably. If he's got a line of sight on us. No, apparently he didn't. So we are good. You can stay there, I think. That's fine. And uh, you actually have a shot at the Queen. Well, we might as well take that shot. I don't think there's any reason not to. And... Uh, there's not many parts of it that we can hit, but let's aim for the leg. Start doing some damage to it. We actually did zero damage anyway, so maybe I'd have been better off with an overwatch there. Uh, they have switched the words, but there's a reason for that. With the Firaxis XCOM, the ability was run and gun. And what run and gun allows you to do is basically do a dash, and uh, do a dash move, and then shoot. What gun and run allows you to do is to basically shoot and then move afterwards so i know it's kind of the same thing but it, it actually works the opposite way around so tactically it is a little bit different now do bear in mind if you do have any questions please do feel free to ask them uh, i will try and answer them as best as i can obviously i don't have any of the developers with me at the moment unless uh, tom is still hanging around in the chat um but uh, I, what i will try and do is stream this on another day hopefully in the week uh, at an earlier time uh, so we can actually get Julian on and he can um, answer some questions for you as well. But uh, I will try and answer any questions as best I can as we go on. So the Queen's coming over here basically to skewer uh, one of my guys. No, she's actually going to drop off one of these little uh, larvae things, which can give you a nasty bite. So you've got to be careful of that. Now we've got some... Actually, you're going to stand right under the Queen because I'd love to put a missile in there and and, and hit many of you together. And that is kind of what the plan is going to be. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take the heavy and we are going to use his secondary ability, which is this rocket launcher. He only has one shot. It's got a massive area of effect. Now, explosive damage also shreds armor. So you can see those five little blue shields above the queen's health bar. So we will be taking some of her armor away. We'll also be killing the lava and we'll probably do quite a bit of damage to this guy as well. In fact, if, I'm, if I make him the epicenter, uh, we can actually finish him off completely. So let's go ahead and take that shot. We have a rather nice explosion there. So that's killed two aliens already and shredded the queen's armor. That's nice. Now, we do have some more things that are moving in, but let's try and focus on the Queen for now. So, let's go ahead. Let's aim for the head uh, here, actually. We'll try and uh, shoot the head if we can. Didn't do as much damage there as I would hope to. Um, grenades work like in the Long War. What, what do you mean um, specifically? What mechanic are you referring to? I could back off from there, but I don't think I will. Let's go ahead and take this guy. He can also take another shot at the head. Trying to pop that melon. There we go. We've managed to shoot the head off. But that's not going to stop it from attacking. You'd think that would kill it off, but no. That's that's just going to anger it more than anything, um, to be quite honest. 
Uh, there is damage fall off, yes, but again, that's only in the um, the current build. I don't know how that plans to work in the final game, but yes, certainly in this build, um, the center of the explosion does more uh, more damage. Um, but, but again, it's the same way that damage the damage model works in this build is that there's fall off over distance. So the further you are, the further you are away from the center of the blast, uh, the the less damage you take. Uh, but again, that 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 is something that may very well change. Um, so we've got our sniper. We could go ahead and fire at that guy down there. Now, does he actually have a weapon? I can't see. No, he's just got a shield. So I'd be more tempted to try and shoot at this guy and disable his gun. Unfortunately, we don't have a line of sight on him. I'm not too sure why. I don't know why our sniper cannot see him. I can't really move the sniper to anywhere where we could get a decent shot either. Um... If we move over here, we would have a flank shot on him. We'd be flanked ourselves, of course, but I'm going to risk it. I'm, I'm going to move the sniper over here. And then I'm going to take a targeted shot. And we're going to aim for his gun arm. If we can disable his gun arm... There we go. Now he can't shoot at us. So that's sort, that solved one problem there. Uh, we could move you further back. I don't think there's any particular reason to, so we'll wait. Uh, we could back up with you. But again, I think you're in a... The queen can move quite far anyway, so there's not really an awful lot of point. You can take a shot at the queen, so you might as well. Uh, let's go for... Can you not hit the abdomen? The abdomen's a little bit out of re reach. Let's see if we can go ahead and get rid of these claws then. If we can get rid of the disabled those claws, we might need to put a few more grenades in here, actually. If we can, uh, if we can reduce her armor, we'll do a lot more damage to her. So you're going to take some bleed damage, that's fine. The queen's bleeding as well. Now, you're melee, so you're going to have to close the gap. You're just deploying your shield. Now, there's no way to stem bleeding at the moment in this build, so the guy that's bleeding will probably be dead before he gets anywhere near me. So I don't have to worry too much about him. Yeah, so the queen's moving a little bit further in. That is unfortunate. She's going to skewer my heavy with a look of things here. Not too sure how she was able to uh, hit him when uh, she doesn't have a head. Uh, now he's actually got a disabled head and he's bleeding, so that's not very good. That's going to really screw up his uh, willpower points. Um, so we might as well make the most of him while he's here. He's probably going to die anyway. Um, let's move him over here, though. And let's go ahead and take the shot. We can go for the carapace. That's pretty much all we can take. Could we shoot it anywhere else and do more damage? Well, we can keep going for those claws, I suppose. So let's try and take the claws off if we can. There's one of the claws down. So we're trying to reduce its ability to attack us here. And this is part of the strategy in dealing with bosses, is that you want to try and isolate and disable different body parts. And what's going to be great about it is that, as I mentioned before, aliens will have the ability to mutate. So you'll have some aliens that will have different body parts, and then you'll have to sort of rethink your strategy about which ones you're going to disable. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in another grenade. Not too bothered about the amount of damage it does there, or more, more trying to get rid of some of the armor here. Now, a few of these aliens are closing in. Uh, that one is nearly dead. I would like to finish it off, so let's go ahead and just get rid of it before it gets too close and causes a problem. Uh, you can't really do anything more, so we'll finish your action. We still have the sniper. Uh, sniper can target this guy. How much damage can you do to him? Not nearly as much as I'd like you to be able to. What about if we just focus fire on the queen? Uh, let's go for this claw. Let's see if we can really reduce its ability to do damage to us. It'd be nice if we can. Uh, you can still take a shot as well. Uh, again, let's see if we can go for that claw. There we go. It's lost both of its claws now. So it's lost its primary method of attack. But that doesn't mean it's the only way it can attack. And again, you, it's even represented here. You can see which parts of its body we are starting to disable. Uh, let's finish your action there. So the aliens will get a turn. She's taking three bleed damage per turn, though. So that's actually going to help us out quite a lot. Now, you're trying to flank around. You're on melee. So you can't shoot us. I believe there is one more uh, alien with a gun over on that side. Now, you're getting quite close, which is good. You're, you're prime, in prime grenade territory there. Now, you've got no claws, so what are you going to do? 
You're going to spit out another lava. Okay. It does actually have a stomp attack as well, where it can sort of stand on top of you and, and well, stomp. Um, let's go ahead and uh, use uh, another grenade over here, particularly with uh, you, because you're the closest. So let's go ahead and select your grenade. Now, can we hit both of those? We can. Won't quite finish the larvae off. So I guess we do that. We'll do some damage to the queen. We'll do a lot of damage to the larva. And we'll uh, shred some armor. Which is the important thing there. We could go ahead and throw in another grenade. But I don't think we're going to bother. Uh, let's just go for that shot on the carapace. We've almost got the uh, the queen dead here. So this will be very good for us. Let's go ahead and use the heavy. Because he's probably going to die soon anyway. Because he's got very, very low health. We can actually uh, kill the queen off. So he is taking bleed damage and he'll be dead in two turns anyway if we don't get this mission finished. So I think we're going to lose the heavy one way or another. So we've got two more targets here. We've got this one health. Um... Are you dead yet? Because you're taking a long time about it. There we go. We've got this one health thing here. So let's go ahead and take our um, sniper. Let's move him a little bit closer. And what I want to do here is I'm going to switch to his pistol. And I'm going to take a shot at the... Um... There is you there, which is problematic, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a shot at the lava with the pistol, because we know we can kill it. So already reduced the willpower of this alien, and then we're going to go and use this to give us an extra shot, and then we'll take it at that guy uh, there. Not that one. We'll go for this one. So we might be able to finish this guy off. We're probably going to lose the heavy. But I guess that's to be expected. You've got nothing else that you can do. Uh, you could throw a grenade or take a shot. And um, you might as well just do damage where you can. Well, who knows? Um, that might be something that ends up getting put into the finished game. I will certainly suggest it the next time that I uh, speak to Julian. So he's actually lost his shield now. He's attempting to recover willpower. Here's that final guy with the gun that we uh, need to try and take out. And there's our heavy taking another bleed damage. So we are literally down to uh, one hit point on that heavy now. This guy here we can practically kill with anybody. So let's go ahead and use you. Because literally uh, one hit and you're dead. So there's two aliens left now. There's the one on this side of the screen. He's losing willpower. We'll try and take him out with the sniper. Again, we'll go for a named shot. Um, what do we want to try and take out? Let's just go, let's go for the head. We'll just try and uh, try and bleed him if we can. Uh, now, our heavy's going to die, so we need to do something with him. We need to make use of him. Um, we can't flank anything. We're definitely not going to get this mission completed in a single turn, so we might as well um, make sure we do something with him. Uh, we won't quite get that thing finished off, but... It's only got two health left now, so that's not really going to last too much longer. And I think we've still got a couple of movements over here. So you can go back to your gun. Now, you don't have a line of sight on him. I'm not too sure you could move anywhere where you would get a line of sight on him. We do need to start moving up ready for this guy. He's going to be a problem. So let's go ahead, go ahead and put you up in full cover. Now, I'm aware that doing this is a dash move, so we can't overwatch or anything. But we just want to try and get a few people into cover to deal with him. So we'll, we'll move you up as well. I hope I've just moved him into cover. No, I didn't. I moved him at the side. Whoops. This is why you should always rotate the camera before making a move like that, and I didn't. It was my own stupid fault. Uh, let's go ahead and use the gun and run, because then that way I can um, move a lot closer with this guy as well. So I'm just trying to move all of these grunts up so we can deal with him. I don't think we're going to lose anybody else, but obviously we are going to lose the heavy, which is a bit of a shame. If we had a way to stem the bleeding, we could solve that, but unfortunately we don't. So... Yeah, you take one more damage. And you're not going to be able to do anything else now. There goes our heavy. That was unfortunate. We're probably one turn away from saving him, which is the annoying thing. Uh, you're going to take the shot on that guy. He's definitely dead. Fantastic. And then, um, where did this guy go to? He's, uh, he's disappeared. I can't actually see him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dash forwards with one guy. Because I want to try and get a line of sight on him. 
I actually don't know where he's gone now, which is a, a little bit concerning. So let's move these guys forwards a little bit. And we'll put them onto Overwatch. Now, one thing that a lot of people didn't like about the Firaxis XCOMs is they had a lot of hard times. So there were a lot of missions where you just had to do things within a certain amount of time. And a lot of people expressed that it's something they didn't want to see in Phoenix Point. So I don't think it is something that you will see in Phoenix Point. However, um, the reason Firaxis added that is they didn't want people to basically sit and spam Overwatch every turn and wait for the aliens to come to you. You can't do that in Phoenix Point anyway, because every time you Overwatch, it costs you willpower. Now, you can get willpower back by killing aliens and by um, using this ability here, providing you haven't moved the soldier in this turn. Uh, but it's a good way to force you to actually push on. So you're not going to have stupid arbitrary timers that force you to rush and make stupid mistakes but at the same time you can't just camp in the corner and put everybody on overwatch for 20 turns and wait for the aliens to run into a wall of gunfire however let's go ahead and put these guys into overwatch and wait for the aliens to run into a wall of gunfire there he is he's stuck his head out now we've actually shot his gun arm so he's got no way of returning fire fantastic you might fire a grenade though He's disabled our leg, so that's going to reduce our ability to move. We are bleeding. We've got one health left. That's unfortunate. Um, uh, special delivery for you in the form of a grenade. And uh, we should be able to finish him off now. Assuming that we've got some grenades left on people, and we have, uh, we can basically go and lob a nade over the fence. And I think that is the last alien. We should be done. And... Brilliant. I only lost one soldier again as well. So quite happy with that. So there we go. This is Phoenix Point, or at least it's the current prototype build of Phoenix Point. And um, I am going to reiterate it once again because th there's always people that watch these sort of videos and uh, uh, make comments about why things don't work properly and how they don't like certain mechanics. This is a prototype development build of a game that is at least 18 months away. There are a lot of mechanics in this in this build that are not final for the finished game. There's a lot of placeholder assets. There's a lot of uh, missing mechanics, missing assets. The destructible terrain isn't in there yet. Um, a lot of the graphical work isn't done yet. So there's um, there's a lot of stuff in there that needs to be um, needs to be fine-tuned and of course you're only seeing a tiny little section of the gameplay a few alien types some very basic archetypes on the infantry you haven't seen really any of the weapon types and stuff like that so there's going to be a lot more stuff added in but uh, i hope you guys watching have found this video useful hopefully it's given you a bit more of an insight into how the tactical combat uh, side of the game is going to be hopefully at some point i'll be able to bring you some footage on the geoscape side of things as well to actually show you how the strategic layer is going to work uh, as i've said i will try and arrange another stream at some point with julian uh, in the hope that he can answer any uh, sort of technical questions that you might have and um this uh, this stream that I'm doing now was a little bit sort of off the cuff. I, I, I was planning to do it, but I wasn't allowed to do it until IGN uh, released their video. And we didn't know exactly when that was going to happen. So th there was no sort of prior planning uh, for this. And um, uh, yes, um, Retcon, the, the global layer, the, they have actually started work on the global layer. They have got um, some of the Geoscape done. But at the moment, the Geoscape doesn't actually talk to the tactical side of things so it's a little bit sort of pointless showing it at the moment because literally what you would have is a sort of a interactive globe at the moment it doesn't link to any of the missions but like i said as, as time comes on i would like to keep sort of doing uh, regular update videos to show how new things have been added uh, make it to oh you mean the actual um strategic layer whether it's going to be turn-based there's, there's still quite a lot of things, quite a lot of mechanics, quite a lot of ideas where they haven't actually settled 100% uh, on how it's going to be done. Obviously, there's still a lot of internal testing being done. Uh, they're still obviously gathering feedback from people. Um, and I'm confident that Snapshot will come up with uh, a really good way. It might not please everybody. 
Um, that's the way game development works. So there will be some people that want it real time. There'll be some people that want it turn based. The same with the actual tactical combat. There'll be some people that want um, time units. There'll be some people that want the two point action system. You can't please everybody, but you can try and find a system that works really well, works for the game. And, you know, it's like if XCOM would have been invented now instead of being invented in 1994. Um, it wouldn't it probably wouldn't have had time units like it did then it would probably have a two action point system now it's just the way that sort of trends change um but you know either way the original xcom and the new xcom they're both very good games in their own right even though they work differently and that is one of the great things about game development but like i said i will try and get julian on a stream hopefully within the next week and i will actually schedule it put it up on the channel um so if um, if you are new to me and you haven't seen any of my stuff before, it's mostly strategy stuff that I cover. Uh, but if you do want to um, subscribe to the channel, uh, you will get a notification uh, in advance when the stream is going to go live. I'll also put it on Twitter as well, so you can if you follow me on Twitter, I'll tweet out when I know that the um, thing's going to go live. It's just at Unstable Voltage. I'm easy enough to find. And uh, this will be going up as a video on the YouTube channel, so if you want to watch it again, by all means, feel free to do so. And I'll probably do a few one-off follow-up videos as well. So I'd like to thank everyone for coming, because I know there's a good 50 people at some point watching, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to ask more questions, I do have my own Discord channel. The link to Discord is in the description below this video. So if you'd like to come and hang out in Discord and ask some more questions, Please feel free to do that. I will be around for another hour or so and do my best to answer any questions for you. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I've been Unstable Voltage. This has been Phoenix Point. I'll see you next time. And until then, goodbye for now.